At the beginning of the 20th century, Peru was a country of not more than 4 million. The majority illiterate, three out of every four lived in the countryside, and more than half lived in the highlands Sierra. With practically no roads, the people lived their lives without travelling far from their place of birth. This huge country had poor communication links. From Lima to Iquitos, a vast distance, which meant a 45-day journey by boat. A good part of the economically active population lived in haciendas, camps which over time were to become cities like Cayalti. Governed by the rules of a patriarchal society and an economy based on primary products, but there was a more modern and export-oriented sector, such as the sugarcane haciendas. In this society, citizens did not have equal rights. Within the haciendas, the owner was lord and master, with the state conspicuous by its absence. However, this traditional society could not last forever. Throughout the 20th century, a series of changes began to transform the landscape. The construction of roads led to the movement of people who previously had been living in isolation. With the construction of the roads, the people of the interior migrated either to the coast or the jungle, whereas the Sierra was depopulated. Lima and other cities grew at a disproportionate pace. The mass media communicated new messages and lifestyles. While the people organized themselves into trade unions, political parties or associations in order to gain and defend their rights as citizens. In the middle of the 20th century, after some years of democratic government, another military government, that of General Manuel Ordria, took control and was in power for eight years. Asumo una vez más mi gran responsabilidad como gobernante ante mis conciudadanos y ante la historia. It was at this time that the Congregation of the Columban Fathers arrived in Peru after having been persecuted and finally expelled from China during the revolution of Mao Zedong. Parallel to this crisis came the invitation of Pope Pius XII appealing for priests to be sent to Latin America. In this way, the Missionary Society of St. Columban began to focus on South America. While one window had been shut, another opened. In 1951, the Superior General assigned two Columban priests to make an exploratory journey to Latin America with a view to designating one or more possible Columban commitments in that continent. Fathers Fergus Murphy and James Lochran, both veterans of China, first visited Colombia and Ecuador and then arrived in Lima on the 7th of February 1952. In October of that same year, the Columbans were offered and accepted a parish in one of the poorest areas of the suburbs of Lima the district Bente Siete de Octubre, today called San Martín de Pores, situated on the edge of the river Rimac, which flows through Lima. At that time, the Columban parish had a population of 15,000 people. 95% of them were Catholics, and soon to be in charge of this parish was Father Martin Ford, who previously worked in the Philippines. He was later joined by two young Irish Columban priests, Michael Fitzgerald and Maliki Lynham. These three Columban pioneers arrived in Lima at the beginning of 1952. The arrival of Father Martin Ford had a considerable impact on the recognition of Martin de Pores. At that time, the church did not allow parishes to be called after those who were called blessed, and Martin de Pores was one of those. Father Martin Ford argued that for the people of Peru, Martin de Pores had an extra significance because he had already been declared the patron of social justice. Finally, 
thanks to his persistence and forceful arguments, permission was granted by Rome to name the first Columban parish as Blessed Martin de Porres. The Columban and associate priests came from a strong Catholic church in Ireland, England, United States, Australia and New Zealand. With the priests, the parishes became centres of celebration of Mass, the sacraments and religious instruction, this being the established way of Catholic life. In the countryside, where parishes are huge and with many different pueblos, the work of the priest is to minister to each pueblo, principally during their annual fiesta. What the people had was their deep faith and hope. The initial work of the Columban was providing spiritual and material assistance, but this led to self-questioning and to an evaluation of their work, helping the poor, yes, but also formation. In 1956, the Columbans, through the initiative of Father David Wall, founded a credit union in San Martin de Porres, which served to improve the living conditions of the local people. It was seen as the first credit union in Peru. Nineteen sixty-two saw the opening of one of the most important councils of the modern church. Cardinal Landassori, together with other Peruvian bishops, young priests, and Peruvian theologians, participated actively. The Second Vatican Council wanted to open the church to dialogue with the modern world. The Peruvian church was very committed to all the processes of change which were taking place at home and throughout Latin America. <laughs>